Michael Burry, the investor who became famous for predicting the massive 2008 housing market collapse. So you made a ton of money? Made a ton of money. Much more than I ever imagined, you know, I'd ever have. No doubt Michael Burry is one of the biggest economists ever to exist. And he's such an icon that his name creates a buzz wherever he goes. Now we all know that Michael Burry is a big short when it comes to making economic predictions and taking drastic financial risks. But lately, it looks like he has been making bad decisions, or could it be that he has run out of luck? I know for sure that some of them thought I lost my mind. Join us as we dive into how the U.S. economy humbled Michael Burry, not just once, but twice. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the craziest info we have on money or the economy. Michael Burry is an American investor and former hedge fund manager who is known for predicting the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis. People are seeing this and those memories of fear are coming back. He was the founder of the Scion Capital Hedge Fund, which he ran from 2000 to 2008. In the early 2000s, Burry recognized the housing bubble and subprime mortgage crisis that was brewing in the United States. He famously bet against the U.S. housing market by taking a series of short positions on mortgage-backed securities. This position ended up making his investors massive returns when the housing bubble burst. I'm talking about hundreds of millions in profits. Well, we, we made $725 million, I think, on the funds in 2007. And in the first six months of 2008, there was about $730 million in withdrawals. Burry's story was popularized in the book and film, The Big Short, which depicted how he utilized complex financial instruments to profit from the collapse of the U.S. housing market. His insightful analysis and willingness to take an unpopular contrarian position earned him acclaim as one of the few who foresaw and profited from the 2008 financial crisis. Seeing the economy on the verge of collapse, I did the logical thing. I sought to profit from it. In addition to his famous mortgage crisis bet, Burry has continued to be an outspoken critic of certain economic and market trends. This is an absolutely devastating commentary on how our government works. In fact, as books and articles on the crisis proliferate, it becomes clear that at nearly every failed institution and in every relevant department of government, there was someone whose insight was every bit as good as mine, and in many cases, better. In recent years, he has warned about potential bubbles in areas such as Tesla's valuation, meme stocks, and the overall stock market. However, his predictions don't always come true, and he has faced criticism at times for his unorthodox views. Michael Burry has a long history of making successful and high-profile economic predictions that have shaped his career. What you were doing sounds to me like the job that the rating agencies should have been doing. And there's no way the ratings agencies had anywhere near the manpower to look through all that was being issued. Yeah, but you're one guy. And you found it. You, you would think that even if they just <laughs> looked at a sample, maybe they would have come to a realization. His most successful economic forecast is, of course, his early prediction of the subprime mortgage crisis that led to the 2008 financial crisis. But there are other notable mentions such as the commodity super cycle. In the mid 2000s, Burry recognized the signs of a commodity super cycle, a prolonged period of rising prices and increased demand for raw materials. He positioned his fund, Scion Capital, to benefit from this trend by investing in various commodity related assets and stocks. His analysis of the global economic forces driving the commodity supercycle was meticulously accurate, such that he recognized the rapid industrialization of emerging markets like China. Biggest, first biggest by certain metrics. And this allowed him to anticipate and profit from the surge in commodity prices during this period. Um, what he's done is basically buy these financial instruments, as you mentioned, to protect against the downside. Now, you might do this for a number of reasons. You might actually hold lots of stocks, but think that the market perhaps will go down for a short period of time. This successful bet on the commodity markets further solidified Burry's standing as a savvy and forward-thinking investor. Here's where it all went wrong. 
While Michael Burry has gained widespread recognition for his successful economic predictions, he has also experienced some notable failures that have tarnished his reputation to a degree. In 2023, Burry made some significant moves. In the second quarter, he purchased bearish put options on two exchange-traded funds that track the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100. These positions were valued at $1.6 billion and were bets against those stock indexes. In the third quarter, he closed out his previous shorts at a 40% loss and bought puts on 100,000 shares of BlackRock's iShares Semiconductor ETF, with a notional value of $47 million. This ETF includes NVIDIA, a graphics chip stock that has tripled in value this year due to excitement around AI. However, it seems that neither of Burry's bets paid off, as the S&P 500 and NASDAQ both rose between the start of April and the end of September, and the microchip ETF has reached a near record high. In, 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 in stocks, in looking for stocks and parts of the market that have higher economic growth potential, we see investors favoring things like technology, uh, China and broad emerging markets. In technology, for example, we look at something like the iShares North American Technology ETF, the ticker's IGM, and what you'd see are Fang and Fang siblings. Still, Burry's short position against Tesla was another high profile and costly investment loss in recent years. I think a lot of skeptics thinking that this is the start of a structural downfall for Tesla. But remember, we were here three years ago and we were here five years ago. And it's our view, it's hard to bet against a, a trillion dollar EV market. Starting in 2019, Burry believed that Tesla's stock was significantly overvalued and that the company faced significant operational and financial challenges. Burry's analysis suggested that Tesla's ambitious production targets, ongoing quality issues, and the company's reliance on government subsidies and regulatory credits would ultimately catch up with it. He was convinced that the stock was due for a major correction. As a result, Burry built a substantial short position against Tesla, betting that the stock price would decline. However, the opposite occurred. Obviously, Tesla is finally realizing the value that I think investors now see clearly the not only the opportunity, but their dominance in the EV market, as well as in energy and battery storage. So, so there is now a complete perception shift of Tesla from a year ago, from probably one of the most hated companies I've ever owned, to now one of the most loved companies. Tesla's stock price continued to surge, driven by the company's impressive growth, successful production ramp up, and broader enthusiasm for electric vehicles. Burry's Tesla short position reportedly resulted in losses of hundreds of millions of dollars for his Scion Asset Management Fund. The stock's meteoric rise, fueled by a combination of impressive operational performance and speculative investor demand, caught Burry and many other short sellers by surprise. Despite these significant losses, Burry remained steadfast in his belief that Tesla's stock was overvalued. He continued to warn about the potential risks and challenges facing the company, even as its share price continued to climb. Ultimately, Burry closed out his Tesla short position in 2021, acknowledging the limits of his ability to time the market and the inherent unpredictability of financial markets. These losses, coupled with the GameStop debacle, highlighted the risks and challenges associated with Burry's unconventional investment approach. Personally, I think the man is a genius, but hey, what do I know? Don't forget to hit me up in the comments with your thoughts on Michael Burry's style and takes on the US economy. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future economic updates. See you in the next one. Julia Chatley in New York. He, uh, he uh, reckoned that he understood more than, or certainly it was uh, suggested he must understand more than Alan Greenspan, who was uh, the Fed chairman at the time uh, back in 2008. And he understood the financial markets more than those who uh, are supposed to run them. Uh, what does he know that they don't this time? You know, when he makes a big move, you're absolutely right. The market listens for all mm. of those reasons. And the thing I loved about that movie, actually, is it simplified something that tends to be incredibly opaque and complex. And, and this is no different, quite frankly.